letters stand for prison mandate, Department of Foreign, an international penal colony. If you're not a citizen and convicted of a crime while in the Panama Canal Zone, you can be sure to wind up here. But the only ones who live by a standard of civilization are the staff, all members of the army and each pushing his case for promotion. A real prize of efficiency is one Captain Turk, who was instrumental at my prosecution. Attention! Right enough. Go on, come on. These are the ones I'd come to stand with for the past five years. Deserters, killers, thieves, from every country in the world, measured only by the combined strength of numbers, which include me, 11621. March! Only nine miles across the water, Panama itself almost reaches out to the island. Customers are completely unaware of anything outside of their drinks of rum. But one was doing time. They say a woman just has to have a motive. Julie's presence here worked as about the greatest pressure for escape I can think of. What's it all about? Sit down, Stone, both of you. This may take a little time. You asked me for a complete file on the problems at the island. <clears throat> I wasn't quite sure what you meant by complete. So I've gathered everything for the past year. If there's any more that That's you want. That's all right. Forget about it. I wouldn't be able to wade through half of what you brought, even if I could devote the whole day to it, which I can't. Now, it seemed the amount of time necessary for all of us to deal with problems at the island would mean our making a move in one of two directions. Either we enlarge the office or do something about conditions over there. You know there isn't a chance for any more help. Uh, that seems to narrow down the field, doesn't it? Look, improving conditions is something we're all in favor of, right? Now, if you have any specific ideas, Something we could submit to the army. I'd be glad to The army, you say? <laughs> we come up with ideas and see how the army feels about them? Look, I'll let you in on a little secret. The army couldn't care less. When the department turned down my request for new barracks and the mess hall, a mess hall to accommodate the overflow, I learned that it was army brass that blocked the issue. That's right. Somebody wants to keep conditions just as they are. I don't know the reason, but there's nothing I can do about it. What do you propose? If I could accomplish something politically, we could start cleaning house. From the bottom to the top, and eventually get the house in order. But that doesn't seem likely to happen for a long time. No, it doesn't. In the past three years, the number of incidents involving violence among the prisoners has increased 200 percent. Now, that's an alarming statistic, even for us to find. The whole situation has gotten completely out of hand. That's why I've arranged for Dr. Engel to see if he can help us. Engel? A professor of psychology, working on a grant provided by the university. I was fortunate to get him during a two-week holiday. Now, he's finished... A 10-day tour of the prison, Ingle. Has he ever done previous work with penal problems? I don't believe I've heard his name. He's never been in the field at all. That's exactly why I picked him. Well, far be it from me to tell you how to run the show, but uh, I don't see how an outside source such as this or any other could possibly provide anything of enough consequence to make a real difference to the problem. Even if he were aware of all the ramifications, I don't see any reason to bring in an expert. What makes you think he isn't? Well, I'm only assuming. 
After all, one trip to the island would hardly show any of us a great deal. Rourke and myself have made three trips in the last six months alone. And each time, we've come up with a new situation. New situation? Everything I've read in the reports indicates there's been no change at all. Except, of course, uh, for the worse. The manner of the incidents may vary. But I must say that the situation hasn't changed at all. Has this uh, Dr. Engel gone to the island as a representative of the university, or uh, as some kind of special counsel to the department? His assignment has been strictly and unofficial. I set it up on as neutral ground as possible to avoid any complications with the army. Mm. Yes? Dr. Engel is here. Ah, good. Send him right in. Now we'll find out if the effort has been worth it. Ah, come right in, Doctor. This is Mr. Rourke. How do you do? And Mr. Stone. Sit down. Thank you. Now, don't be surprised, Doctor, if you find my colleagues perhaps a little skeptical of my bringing a medical man into a realm such as this. You're perfectly understandable. May I ask if you gentlemen oppose the theories of medical analysis, or is your concern of my own qualifications? No, we don't oppose anything, Doctor. Not if it will help us. Uh, you'll have to forgive me, Doctor. Don't believe I've expressed my appreciation for your time. I wanted to meet you at the plane, but I just couldn't get away. No apologies. I'm sure you have much to take care of right here. As far as the time is concerned, I must tell you that it was not extended without selfish motivation. I rather enjoyed my visit to the island. I found the circumstances most intriguing, if not somewhat frightening. It's an area in which I've been... Greatly interested. Well, I hope you've been able to observe something we miss. We make the trip to the island ourselves on a regular basis. Well, I feel certain that my observations will coincide with your own. I don't believe any of us really expected anything new. I don't imagine you were disappointed. Hmm. I'm afraid I witnessed about everything that you mentioned in your letter. The day after my arrival, one of the new prisoners was found beaten to death. Well, the captain's report stated that the killing was due to a squabble over a package of cigarettes. I petitioned time and again to get cigarettes allotted each week instead of once a month. But we're working on that problem. Are you thinking, Doctor, that the explanation behind these uh, outbursts is based upon mistreatment of the prisoners? The lack of certain luxuries, such as a cigarette. I don't believe that the term mistreatment is the best we could use. I must say that I witnessed procedure that, in my opinion, was grossly unwise. Well, I hope you're not advocating a policy of leniency. A prison run with loving care can't possibly achieve its purpose. Well, that might depend upon how far you go with it and what kind of programming you could affect. Could it be, Doctor, that a man such as yourself is just a little bit overboard on, uh, shall we say, feelings of uh, compassion? You see, we've considered this many times before, and unfortunately, it can't possibly work. Not in any way that we... He's right, Doctor. We learn the hard way. But you can't loosen the reins. Both an iron grip and absolute discipline are essential. We can't change it under any circumstances. Are you aware that each and every individual on that island is psychologically ill? That every day, week, month, serve to compound that illness? Well, it's our job to understand the criminal mind well, and its pattern. Not referring to the prisoners alone. Well, where the fact that the soldiers sometimes are influenced by the environment, we suggest their transfer from time to time. The records show that they don't want to transfer. That the same personnel stays on year after year. Are you telling us, Doctor, that uh, you feel the staff is for the most part responsible for the actions of the prisoners? Your island, Mr. Rourke, is a massive hotbed of individuals who suffer from a destruction mania. Each individual is one who is compelled to destroy that which he doesn't approve of, or perhaps can't understand. The original problem of each man is completely dwarfed by the tentacles of this monster which continue to grow in every direction. Unfortunately, there's 
very little basic difference between the motivation of those who seek to destroy from a defensive point of view and others who are placed in a stronger position. Everyone on that island is suffering from the same malignant growth. And the soldiers, whether they know it or not, are the worst offenders in keeping that thing alive. As far as I'm concerned, only a little cooperation from the staff would make my job a lot easier. I have to agree with the thinking that they're no better than the prisoners when it comes to talking to any of us. The Major's wife is about the only one that's ever told me the truth about anything. Have you had much occasion to talk to the prisoners themselves? I mean, in regard to the personnel. I've talked to a lot of them. This, uh, hate goes so deep that, well, most of the stories about the guards have to be taken with a grain of salt. I have heard some good ones, though. Mm -hmm. I bet you have. Well, it's quite natural to expect complaints and all sorts of stories from the type of person who's been sent to that island for whatever crime he's committed. Personally, I wouldn't give any of them a second thought. I don't believe we've taken stock in anything the inmates have tried to bring out. But if these stories are true, we might have to revise our thinking regarding almost every case in question. Don't misunderstand me, gentlemen. These prisoners are equally sadistic and dangerously violent, almost wild animals. But my point is that they have the right to be considered as human beings, individually. And that is something that is definitely not being manifested because the, the guards themselves are incapable of it. I take it you're saying we should attempt to transfer the entire staff from the Major on down. That may raise the question of how many times you would have to repeat the process. The twisted methods of procedure would be sure to gain another foothold and you'd be in the same situation again. Well, it appears in following this line of reasoning, Doctor, that we might find ourselves reaching a stalemate. Tell me, Doctor, how does one get out of the stalemate? There's only one way, I'm afraid. By conceding the game. <gasps> Come on, baby. Come on. Come on, little Thor. Come on, speak to Daddy. Come on. <sighs> okay, how much? Two and a half? That's it for me. Me too. I haven't even got beer money. Oh, yet. come on. I'll take care of the beer. I'll buy it. Uh -huh. Hey, how would you guys like to have a real drink? At the canteen. No, no. Look, Sully just got back from Perlo, and he bought six quarts. I got enough here for six. Or one. Mm, no. I'd better not. Well, Captain Turk's been all over me lately. If he catches me drinking tonight, I'll get the treat. Ah, so we give him a drink. No, we better check the board. Come on, Slate. Yeah, it'll wait till tonight. This is it. Oh, uh, look, I think you guys are all crazy. All I've been hearing is the same thing. Today's the day. Today's the day. <laughs> look, what makes you think we could get the arsenal? Or even get close to it, huh? Rick Marson is fixing it. You know, for the past couple of months, he's been working in the labor detail office, making out the phony worksheets there. Yeah. All right. He made out a worksheet, a work detail, for the guards to be way over the other side of the island for gun practice. And he made out a phony work detail for himself to be working on the road gang. Now, there's only going to be one guard inside and one on the outside. Get it? Yeah. Break out!
got it real easy, Scallon. Scrub down my office.
the agonizing frustrations of confinement unleashed themselves in a wave of destruction, whereas only the very strongest had the least hope of forging themselves a path to freedom. The channel was not impossible to cross in the water itself, and undoubtedly some would be able to reach the coast before the beaches were alerted. The guards would be busy for the next 24 hours, just following groups. Their progress slow in finding each direction of travel a few miles through the cover of jungle, and I'd be safe for the night. She didn't know it yet, but all of Julie's time in that isolated little cafe was about to pay off. As for the way I felt, the hours ahead couldn't pass quickly enough. Deixei lá pra trás meu lar, taquei o pé no ouro, pode a mim orar, ai, ai, me orar, eu corri atrás da sorte, veio o dia. No 
Mobile 9 to main base. That word about an hour ago from Mobile 6. Second and third company scored heavily this afternoon, right after our separation at the North Point. Figures are 19 by the third. The second has a total of 31, including two washed upon the beach. Darling, it's so good to be alive. With all the days that pass into nights for the window with the wind taking smoke away, I just never imagined it could all fade so completely. If somebody had ever tried to tell me how it feels to come alive when you haven't been for so long, I don't think they could have described it, really. From now on, I don't care where we have to go long as you're not away from me, not even for an hour. There'll be a lot more than hours spent in that jungle before I'm out of here. Ricky, what about a ship? I know someone who can fix it, I'm certain. And I have enough money to... No good. There isn't a chance that way. <sighs> oh, think of it, Rick.
Take a look. Very interesting. But it isn't good enough. They're not doing too badly. I think you fail to realize that the further they get, the weaker our position becomes. If they move out of our jurisdiction, we're sunk. That won't happen. Besides, the heat will be off with only a few of them left. As far as I'm concerned, there's only one of any consequence. I think Turk shares that point of view. He doesn't get Marsden. He knows it'll cost him plenty, and that goes for us, too. Get word to Turk. Tell him we'll give him all the extra men he needs. Pull out the stops. But get Marson. There's a house. They'd be good for supplies. Scallon, you take a look. Gangarine. They said you scallers. Makes it easy for me. Now you're going back. Find yourself an excuse but send Rick Marson down here. Believe me, none of them have a chance, Scallon, but this is yours. Some wine. Now you remember, Scallon, you run and you'll be dead like all of them. All right, get going. One man there. We've got all kinds of things we can use. Even wine.
You'll have to go down to yourself, Rick. He's an old man. You can handle him better than any of us. You can talk about us food, rope, about everything we'll need. You go. Check it out. Come right back. Let's move.
That's it, Rick. We've had it. All right. 